Well, evening, everybody, uh, especially to those who've been here for a while. Um, welcome to the Audits and Standards Committee meeting of this evening. Um, I've received apologies from Councillor Torbert, and as she's the only person who's not here, um, everybody else obviously is attending. Um, item number two, then. Do we have any declarations of interest from anybody? No. Okay. Um, item three, then, the minutes of the previous meeting. Does anybody have any comments in relation to those, or can we take them as an accurate record? No. Okay. Thank you. Item number four, then, the internal audit plan for 2023-24. Um, and Claire's going to give us a rundown on that whenever you're ready. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yep, so this is the internal audit plan for 23-24, so covering the next 12 months, um, the areas that we're going to look at over the next 12 months. Um, so this is a risk-based plan, so we do a risk assessment before we pull the plan together. Um, also, at paragraph 2.3 there, you'll notice that um, I've also included the internal audit charter within the pack as well. So the charter is required by the public sector internal audit standards, and it sets out how we will conduct our audits. So there's no changes to the to the charter this year. I have reviewed it, and it remains fit for purpose. But just to include it for information, um, it starts on page 15 of your pack. So going back to the, the internal audit plan, um, so it's a, as I mentioned, it is risk based. So we look at the um, the council's corporate risk register um, to highlight areas uh, that warrant review. Um, we I also do some horizon scanning, so I look at just what's what's going on across um, local authorities in general. Um, if there's anything there, we need to pull in. Also look at information, for example, external audit reviews that have been completed, uh, just to see whether there's any other areas that would be useful for for internal audit to to look at. Um, we also talked to the corporate leadership team as well about key areas that they want assurance on. So they were really helpful in pulling together some areas to, for inclusion in the plan. So just to mention as well, um, Stoke also provides um, the corporate fraud service for Newcastle. So we do work closely. The two teams do work very closely together. So uh, when we conduct an, uh, an audit review, the risk of fraud is obviously considered um, in key reviews. And should any information come to light, that means we need to get audit, uh, sorry, fraud involved in audit reviews. We can't, we can pull on that expertise. So that is available. Um, in terms of key financial systems this year, you'll notice that the, the, the list this year is smaller than perhaps it has been in future years. Uh, and that's because we've moved into a rolling programme um, of reviews for key financial systems. This was something that was recommended through the, the external review of the service that was done um, just before Christmas. So we've moved to this rolling programme. So what we'll do is we'll look at where we've provided sort of good or well-controlled assurance on a particular um, system. We'll then move that into that three-year rolling programme. So we won't look at every, every area every year. Should obviously we identify any issues with any um, in any uh, system, we can bring that forward. We don't have to stick to that three-year programme with. So for example, if we have a major system change or if staff change, we can bring those reviews forward. But yeah, should everything stay the same and we've got that good assurance in place, we'll move to that, that three-year rolling programme. We also want to take health checks um, for financial systems as well. So rather than big full reviews where we've done that um, previous work, and we can draw assurance and say no, nothing, no um, key changes have happened. We will do that sort of overall, just broad um, health check. Again, if we're doing that health check and we spot anything, we can turn that into a full review if we need to. Um, should anything, you know, alert us to the need for a full review. Um, this year, we're also looking at providing some consultancy support as well as our normal audit work. So uh, an audit review, we, we come in, we assess the risk, we pull a, a program together and, and we do a, a, a review, provide a report and an opinion on the control environment. With consultancy support, um, we're providing more of an advisory type role. So that can be really helpful. Say, for example, we've got the, the code of corporate governance on, on the um, plan to do some consultancy work on. So you are planning to review that. So as you're planning to review that, we can be on board, provide that advice and support as you go making that review. Um, and hopefully that will be really helpful in terms of helping you get to the end result that you want in terms of reviewing um, that code, rather than waiting until you've reviewed 
reviewed it, coming in at the end and doing the audit and then spotting things that perhaps could have reviewed, been included in the review at the time. So hopefully that'll be really helpful uh, as a way to, for us to add value in a different way. Um, so there are a number of um, reviews. You'll notice we've put consultancy support in brackets on, on the plan itself. So the plan is included as Appendix A on page 13. Um, we are continuing to provide um, IT assurance as well. You notice there's um, a list of um, IT audits that we plan to undertake. Uh, we are moving to a process of bringing those IT audits sort of in-house into the, um, we have got um, provision in the internal audit team to provide um, audit um, assurance. Um, but we, we are still using some external support um, just for some reviews that are, are remaining ongoing, um, given that the previous um, external um, reviewer who provided support on the on IT uh, has, you know, has got that knowledge of the organisation. We are continuing to pull on that support where we need to. But yeah, we are in the process of moving that to, to in-house so that we can provide that IT support in-house. I think that's everything that I wanted to, to raise. Thank you, Chair. Happy to take any questions. Thanks, Claire. Um, <clears throat> just a question for me to just start off with. Have we, within the audit plan here, have we got anything that's there uh, specifically relating to the town deal and the other projects that are big money items? We have got a line for major projects. Um, we put that in as consultancy this time, so to provide that um, advice and support. We are actually in the process of doing the town deal audit, which is left over from last year's plan, so we're in the process of doing that at the minute. Um, so that'll probably come through probably first quarter, maybe second quarter, depending on how quickly we can get that review done. But, yeah, that is already in progress based on last year's plan. Yeah, just on that question, yeah. can I ask that it's both town deals or is it? Which, which you mentioned we're doing it now, is it both town deals or is it just one of the two? Is it both? <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, we're in the process of designing the audit at the minute, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I think that given that it's such a large thing, when you do get to the stage at which you're reporting on that, I think it would be helpful if we could have a bit more information than we normally would, um, simply because of the sheer size of it. I'm not suggesting that, you know, there's anything untoward going on, but I just think that given the size of it, it would be something that I personally, and I'm sure Mike and some of the others would probably want to look at in a little bit more detail, just so that we can perhaps get a bit more information on what you've actually looked at and that sort of thing. And we, we, we're not trying to check to make sure it's been done properly. It's just for, for you know, for our own uh, peace of mind. Yeah, happy to provide that, that chair that, when we're ready. Yeah, yeah we can do that. Okay, no thanks. problem. We'll um, revisions part of the quarterly update report that yeah, provides yeah, additional information yeah, on yeah. that audit. Yeah. Okay. Have we got any other questions for Claire on the reports, Mike? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. I mean, just to take one step back from uh, and for a more of a sort of reminder of where, how we got to this point. So, are we currently contracted with Stoke on Trent Council to provide the external audit? And if we are, how far are we through that contract? Uh, and if we are going to review that, when will, when will that take place? And will there be a, a value for money uh, exercise completed before we do that? We are in, or we have just come to the end of the three year original contract with um, Stoke. We are taking a paper to cabinet tomorrow, which extends that contract for a further year. And then, yes, we will do that exercise as in the value for money and you know have a have a look sort of wider to, to make sure that we're still getting the value for money from Stoke, which i'm sure we will be <laughs> thank you uh i've got a couple more questions uh section nine is the major risks can claire expand a little bit on uh what what major risks could be and perhaps give a, a working example of one uh it mentions very much that you need to be agile to, to look to these things and there's a risk that we're going to miss something uh but how 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 do you tr sort of ensure really that you're going to pick up all these things obviously as i mentioned when we pull the plan together we are drawing on lots of different sources um, of information horizon scanning going through a management team um looking at previous audit work that we've done pulling on what external audits have looked at talking to key officers you know we, we are trying to pull that information from from a lot of different angles obviously 
the, there may be new risks that arise during the yeah. yeah there may be new risks that arise during the year and we always build um some additional time into the plan so that should a new risk arise or a risk that was previously being well managed so could not be well managed we build in time so that we can review um we can include that um, as an unplanned piece of work so on a quarterly basis when i come back to the committee and say what audits we've done i always do a review at that point as well of of, of audits of, of where we are in terms of the plan because sometimes it may be that actually something we identify that we we're going to look at some becomes not relevant as well it can it can work the other way as well but yeah that is our opportunity on a quarterly basis when I report back to you to review the plan and say is it still delivering what we need to deliver is it picking up the key risk areas that's one I promise chair uh with regard to the, the 276 looks familiar is that is that the contracted figure the number of days that we engage stick for how do we break down those days per directorate so obviously each directorate's got a number of days and then the it audit assurance is there a formula that we use or is it more a we think we need more in this direction than we do in others yeah so as claire was saying um we do we plan the audits on a risk base and obviously when we have last looked at that particular area that service area so there won't be a number of days spent in each particular service directorate it'll be well, actually we need to have a look at the fact the general ledger system now because we haven't looked at that for two years or you know we need to have a look at governance because of the town deal fund the future high street fund and the governance arrangements around those major projects so it, it is as and when you know things come up and, and, and when we we feel that they need addressing sorry Questions then, Wendy. Yep. Just, just, just a quick one. Um, talking about it being an agile system to cope with a volatile situation. Uh, going back to what um, Councillor Wheelman said in, in the training meeting, which uh, I think many of you were there, we're looking at parameters and we're looking at things which are fixed around which we've got to fit an awful lot of things financially. Um, and the economic are not fixed at the moment. Governments change, governments change priorities, elections come up, different budgets for different places, based on all sorts of things that actually, you know, a lot of this is looking at something that's an ideal situation, but clearly it's, we live in a volatile world. Um, and there's a difference between something being agile and something being able to adapt to changing financial circumstances. As something that's, um, you know, obviously fit into a rather artificial framework. I mean, I, I can sit, I can see this, and I can see that certain parts of the directorate are allocated things, and you know, therefore, it's implied that these things are done from the start and the finish because you have to have, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to do the job or to report anything back at all. But um, looking at future high streets, for example, and things like that, it's not a it's not a fixed style. It's not a it's not a situation that's been consistent from minute one of it, because the, the the figures change, the priorities change, the plans change, pressure is put on um, on the organisation, both from a council point of view and from an electorate point of view, and from a financial point of view. And uh, you know how how could you how can you explain? And here I go again, not just to the public as you know in, in the words of one syllable, I'm not looking for a joy the dust thing. But um this this kind of thing doesn't well only reassures me while I'm sitting in this room. But when I'm not sitting in this room and I'm somewhere else and I'm thinking that things can change so rapidly and for such frivolous reasons sometimes um plans go awry, costs things become inadequate or it's almost too adequate. Um this 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 that you have this that I have in front of me, which is 276 days, which may be there. Um, how do we keep up to date with changes that are taking place? Because 
you know, I'm looking, I'm looking at this and it all looks almost too tidy for real life. I'm a late person. <laughs> <so I don't laughs> actually, you know, to me, it just looks as if it's an attempt to fit some fit something that isn't jelly into a jelly mold. You've got to account for things in a certain way because obviously that's your job and that's that's responsible. But um, how do you cope with unforeseen things and political variation? It's not part of the Ottoman one, the political mm -hmm. and variation. Mm -hmm. Isn't it, it doesn't it unsettle? Unsettle you, doesn't it? I mean, it unsettles me from meeting to meeting. Well, I'm assuming it also unsettles you when something comes, you know, out of the woodwork like this. Mm -hmm. isn't it? Just to say that, yeah, it, it is a plan. It is a plan that, say, doesn't doesn't get delivered perfectly. You know, a couple of audits might take a bit of extra time. Some audits might take a, a bit less time. As I mentioned already, some an audit might we might for some a valid reason agree that we're going to do an audit, and then for then the, it changes so much that actually it's not a valid time to do that piece of work or an unplanned piece of work arises, and we'll we'll slot that in. So yeah, it is a plan. It is a plan that we're working to. So we've got some framework to work within. But yeah, we do have to make sure that we're reviewing that on a regular basis. We have to make sure we can flex it where we need to and yeah a, an audit is always a snapshot at a point in time and things change and which is why we have that regular um quarterly review of the plan and why on the, on an annual basis we do that horizon scanning uh, you know and take assurance from various sources about what we need to include on the plan but yeah it's, it's no it's not it's not easy and you say it looks easy on a piece of paper doesn't it yeah obviously yeah wriggles out of it in all directions. And um, you know, I'm just I'm just looking at it and giving a an unexpert's view. Uh, not just about what I personally think of plans, but about their shortcomings. And uh, you know, th things that things that really need um well, as as uh, council stuff said, you know, we need reassurances about about certain things that are not going not not that aren't being done right, but where things can't be helped and where funding sources change and political directions change. Just wondering to what extent we can get reassured about that. Because we're here now and obviously there's a you just seen the thing about the year mm -hmm. and the rest of it. Mm -hmm. I think well internal audit is only one source of assurance, isn't it? You've got other routes as well, haven't you? You know, you've got the you you your scrutiny committees and other ways of uh, getting that assurance. But obviously we we are one. Uh, element of that of a bigger framework around assurance and wellness. So we try and do what we can with the resources that we've got. Yeah, thanks, Joan. Yep. I think in my head, you've got to have a, a basic skeleton, and that's the plan. The flexibility for lizards coming out of cupboards, <laughs> which I thought was a good analogy, is dealt with by the quarterly review and contingency for money or time. And, and that gives me a good deal of um, sort of comfort that it's dealt with if it's if it's revisited quarterly you're not going to miss a strange thing happening by by very much time be it cash or or outage um so i'm i'm comforted with that but you've got to have somewhere to start and you start from what happened last time or what somebody else did or another council did and then you add bits to it that are particular am i right to to your particular council so I'm happy. I think if if you don't start off with a plan, you'll end up with chaos anyway. So you have to start off with a plan and ensure that you've got sufficient flexibility in the regime in order to uh, meet any changes that might come along. But you know, if you don't have that initial plan, then it'll just be mayhem. <laughs> right. Do we have any more questions for Claire on these reports? No? Right. Well, in that case, then, um, in accordance with the committee's terms of reference, uh, we we need to do three things. First of all, we need to approve the internal audit plan for 23-24. Um, 
approve the internal audit charter for 23-24 and also agree to receive quarterly reports um, on the delivery of the assignments within the plan. Are we happy to do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Moving on then, item number five then is the corporate fraud arrangements. And uh, Sarah's going to give us a bit more information on that. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Chair. Um, so the, the Council's committed to, to providing effective counter-fraud function, which is supported by an effective policy framework. Um, having an anti-fraud and anti-corruption framework in place demonstrates the Council's zero tolerance to any um, form of fraudulent activity. It's important that the existing framework is reviewed and updated to take into account any new um, legislation or procedures and best, best practice. Um, this report uh, therefore requests that the following policies which support the counter-fraud function be noted. So it's the anti-fraud and anti-corruption framework, the fraud response plan, the whistleblowing policy and the anti-money laundering policy. Uh, the council continues its annual subscription with Protect, uh, an independent legal charity who offer confidential advice, and it also continues to work with Stoke on Trent City Council under the um, partnership agreement for the counter fraud services. I'm happy to take any questions if there are any. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Mike. Yep. Thanks, Chair. Uh, just a. Quick, I mean, more more support than anything, because uh, sometimes we just wave these reports through, uh, and yes, they dry. But there's somebody who loves a good forward response report. Yeah, you know, I'm all, I'm all for them. Uh, can I just encourage members to have a quick glance through them if they haven't, because they are important. I uh, think that they're essential for the the operation. The one that I did sort of highlight myself was on page thirty of the. Uh, of the report, sorry, it's the expected behaviour, uh, and it points back towards the Nolan principles. Setting aside uh, local politics, that what people see on TV at the moment is not a good example of people following what they should be. And it falls to us as local councillors to behave as we should. This report's very clear on, you know, we're expected to behave as we should, uh, so is, so are the, the, the officers and, and the Nolan principles now are more important than they've ever been because we have to show that we're not all the same and we have to show that we are above, you know, some of the things that are going on, especially on a national level at the moment. So I think I just wanted to say that in support of this, this these reports, the four reports are very important. Uh, we should take the five minutes to read them. Uh, we might not ever need them, but if we if we do ever need them, it's important that they've been written correctly. And I just thank you to the officer for doing that. Any other comments or questions? No. Okay. Are we happy then in a, in that case to note these reports? And obviously, what Mike says is absolutely true. It, it is worth people reading through them. I hope everybody does read them. But, uh, okay. Sorry, Joan, yes. It's, it's, I had over the years that the officers here are producing important reports, but been making them very readable from a lay perspective, mm. and, and I thank them for that. Yeah. Uh, so that we can go to universities was yeah. rather difficult. So thank you very much. Mm. And they are we'll, we'll award our own crystal mark then in that case <laughs> okay thanks sarah right okay then moving on then um item number six then is the risk management policy and strategy for 2023 24 and dan's going to just give us a little bit of information on that if you wouldn't mind please. yes thank you chair um so as you said risk management um strategy and policy for, for the current financial year uh being brought to you for for approval um the policy and the strategy um set out for you how we identify um and log risk and how we mitigate against it how we report and how we es escalate ultimately up to this committee um in terms of risks that can't be satisfactorily managed or 
um, you know, action plans that are overdue or whatever. Um, I know the people watching online won't have had the benefit of the training session you did, um, but it really is, uh, you know, the, the the policy and document that sits behind um, all of those systems that that are net ably demonstrated for you. Um, a couple of improvements in this round in response to previous feedback, um, and those are in relation to a clearer definition of the roles and responsibilities of the various arms of the council, members and officers and groups, and that's in the appendix to the strategy that's attached. And then what you would have seen again in the training session today is that change to the evaluation matrix where we assign a common um, evaluation indicator to risks of a similar level, irrespective of whether they reach that level because of the likelihood and all the impact. Um, so hopefully that makes the reports much clearer to understand than the explanation I've just given of the new matrix chair. Um, so that's all I wanted to say, uh, in, unless there's any questions, which of course I'm happy to take. Thanks, Dan. I mean, we're fortunate we had a bit of training around similar sort of things earlier, uh, but does anybody have any questions in relation to these policies? Yeah, Mike. A couple of quick comments, Chair. Uh, just to follow, Dan, I, I wrote down in my notes that, you know, it's it's really good to see that some of the audit recommendations have been included into the new policy. A lot of times you see uh, authorities trying to argue why they shouldn't uh, amend their, you know, what we do is yeah. best. Well, actually, we have audit for a reason. They know best uh, and they follow policy just as, as well as anybody else. So that's really pleasing. The other one is a very simple one as well. The, the quick guide is really useful. Because if again, if a, a counselor or somebody needs to pick up this, if they haven't got a guide to how to read the gobbledygook, as, as, as Joan said, I mean, and I absolutely agree. Although I do write university reports, so I might have to run them by you going forward. Uh, so that's really useful as well. And it's a really good addition. Thank you. Perhaps if you bring a few in, we'll give you a crystal yeah. mark as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Do we have any other? Questions or comments in relation to these? No? Okay, then. First of all, then, um, can we accept the reviewed risk management policy and strategy? Um, and also, can we approve the policy statement so that that can then go to the chief executive and the leader? And also, we, also, we, need, we need to note our own responsibilities in relation to the risk management of the council. We're happy with all of those. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Item number seven, then, the external audit report. Um, we're talking about the value for money report, basically, here. And Andrew's uh, come along to give us a run through on that. So when you're ready, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, so this is our annual report. This is the second year we've produced um, a report of this kind. Um, and largely what it details is um, our VFM commentary i am um, having done the work around the three themes that we look at as part of this work so we look at three thematic areas one is financial sustainability of the council one is the council's governance arrangements and the, and the second and the third and final one sorry is around um the council's arrangements for for improving economy efficiency and effectiveness um very pleased to say in terms of headlines that we've not identified any significant weaknesses in any of the council's arrangements across those three thematic areas which is good news that 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 was the case last year as well um we have raised a number of improvement recommendations nine in in total three in in each of the theme areas that that i just described um Whilst that does sound like a high number of recommendations um relatively speaking it, it, it's relatively modest and improvement recommendations by the very nature they're only suggesting areas of minor weakness or potentially kind of good practice so from a concern point of view that i don't think these are issues that necessarily need to be of, of great concern to members but uh, these are just suggested ways that the council could potentially strengthen its arrangements um, i'm not going to go through each of the recommendations on the basis that they are improvement recommendations um, and more than happy to take any questions that members have on any of the, the commentary or indeed the recommendations in the in the reports. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, I mean, we, we have seen quite a lot of this information already, but if members have got any questions in relation to it, then more than happy to pass up. You're right, Mike, yeah. I've been sitting making notes all afternoon, Paul. I've got to get them out. Uh, on page uh, 111 of the report, it, just to, to, to reiterate what's been said, it's really positive to see 
uh, three green lights uh, and, and they smiled as well because there's always leave them wanting a little bit more so governance can be improved a little bit which you know that's fine but I think as, as Andrew just said that with with the nine sort of improvements that that could be uh, worked up quite easily uh, moving on to the first recommendation uh, again it's really pleasing that actually the, the council are taking the advice of the auditors and are going to build in to the performance uh, and budget monitoring report that the, the, the savings achieved will be put against the planned savings. So that, that's that's really good. Uh, moving on to uh, the recommendation two. Can the finance officer comment on why the management hasn't taken or or is not necessarily taking the advice uh, has read and wants to, to to obviously go a different route. Is there any particular reason, Sarah? I'm just reading the management comments. Uh, it's almost like, well, we do it a different way. We don't particularly want to do it your way. On uh, recommendation two. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so um, I think this was wasn't particularly about not wanting to do it their way as such. <laughs> um, we we were just um, there was I think there was a comment about the council relying on one-off funding uh, or reserves to balance our budgets, which isn't the case for us uh, at all. And obviously, myself and Andrew had a, a discussion about that, and the, and the wording was um, tweaked kind of on, on that. Um, there are, I think, the savings in relation to, well, ongoing savings. We, if we go back a couple of years prior to COVID and we introduced the commercial strategy, which we had great plans for, and then obviously a couple of months later, COVID hit us and really put kind of spanner in the works there for that. Though that is a big piece of work that we need to really kickstart again now. We are in the process of kickstarting that commercial commercial strategy. And it's the commercial strategy and uh, the one council program, which are two big pieces of work that we need to actually support the, the savings plans moving moving forward over a five year program. We can't it's kind of impossible for us to actually balance a five years of the MTFS um, because everything is a, a moving feast um, and we are continually when we when we do the efficiency board programs we are not just looking at that immediate year to balance the budget we are looking at year two three four and five and there might be bits within those pieces of work or projects that services are bringing forward to us that cover two three four years of the MTFS and we are building those savings in I think this was sort of um, advising us to kind of look a little bit more and maybe maybe detail that work that we are already doing a little bit better in some of our um, reports that we present to, to Cabinet and to, to FAPS and, and to auditing standards. But certainly that work is going on in the background. Um, we, like I said, we, you know, we are in the process of really kickstarting that commercial strategy again, which is a big part of the savings plans and you'll start to see more information as, as we you know progress with those moving forward thank you uh, okay moving on to recommendation four uh the management comments uh, talk about a uh, the presentation of this information for cabinet will be reviewed has that review started It's all to do with the tabular format. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this, um, we have this, this, well, this recommendation was the one that we didn't fully address from last year's value for money audit. And that was partly based on a couple of reasons where really we do, obviously budget monitoring happens every month and we, we have a, a detailed um, sort of down to, to service level uh, report that goes to our corporate leadership team. So they can see every single budget line um, and what's happening with them. We have a, a full discussion at, um, at that particular meeting for that. That information is then summarised into our um, cabinet report and taken, obviously, to, to FAPS and to, to cabinet. And I think we were sort of 
discussing how much detail we put in these reports, not wanting to hold back any detail, but internal recharges, for example, they cause us a slight problem throughout the year, as in we tend to deal with those at the end of the year. So if we, how we report that information on a quarterly basis, some of the figures, unless we do lots of manual kind of uh, changes, might look slightly skewed on the service levels because we have internal recharges that we don't address to the end of the year. So it's something that looking at it's something that I'm going to obviously try and give some more detail but without obviously making it a really big task for the finance team which as you're aware are quite a small finance <laughs> team um but making it in yeah to provide more information it's a little bit more kind of user-friendly for members but without kind of confusing at the same time so yeah no, I mean, that's absolutely fine. And obviously, we sat in a room together on many occasions doing said recharges over the years. So uh, I, I fully understand that. Uh, recommendation five uh, recommends a second independent member to audit standards, which it looks like we are happy to uh, accept. How will that person be appointed? Uh, and has that appointment taken place yet? It hasn't taken place yet. We're going to have to go out and advertise. We were having a discussion, weren't we, earlier about this. Um, so we will have to advertise and see if we can get any interested parties um, that might want to, to join us. Thank you. Uh, recommendation eight talks about uh, the council needing to update the financial regulations to ensure the points raised and the improvement <laughs> recommendations are all covered. Has that taken place? I know it won't be signed off until obviously the next go around, but has that, uh, the regulations been updated to include the recommendations? We're currently working on updating these financial regulations at the moment, but we will take these points into consideration as part of that piece of work um, for when we do the revised version. <laughs> one for me uh, is the, the follow-up of previous recommendations. You've obviously given us uh, a reason for number three, which is the quarterly financial performance. That's what we've just talked about. Uh, act, recommendation two and recommendation four uh, are partially completed. Uh, can we expect them to be completed during this financial year? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Stan, <sir. laughs> I can, I can elaborate a little further in respect of recommendation four. My understanding is that that is already complete and there's just a time lag in the reporting because I had the team um, cross-reference, particularly member declarations of interest against company house records, and I'm assured everything is all in order there. Okay, Steve. Yeah, one thing if I can add, Mike, I, I think I'm correct in saying this, is Sarah received this on Friday afternoon. So, you know, independent members, she only got this on Friday. So it'll, it'll happen, but it's, it's not going to happen tomorrow. Is it? Is that right, sir? Well, Friday, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a good report. It's nice to see that some recommendations so that we're getting something for our money or the taxpayers' money. But, um, and, you know, I don't think that there's, there's anything in there that gives us any particular cause for concern. But at the same time, um, we can see from it that there are areas that we can improve on, which, again, is a good thing. Um, does anybody else have any comments or questions on the report? No? OK, so <clears throat> we're happy to accept that as it is then. Um, moving on then to... Item number eight, then, is the committee work plan. It's on the back page of your packs. Um, a couple of things to note on this. Um, as Sarah mentioned earlier, the, the deadline dates in relation to draft accounts and things like that are changing, which means that our 19th of June meeting um, is beyond the date at which we need to approve the draft accounts. So what we're going to do is look at putting in a meeting on either the 30th or the 31st of May, uh, at which point in time the draft accounts will come to the committee for approval. We don't know exactly what date it's going to be because we've only just uh, been discussing it tonight. Um, so we'll come back to members, but at 
does anybody have any particular issues that they know of at this moment in time in relation to the 30th or 31st of May that they want to flag up now? Right, okay, yeah. Yeah, is it half term? Yeah, it's it. that is the half term week. Unfortunately, because we need to bring them back before the 31st of May and trying to give the finance team as long a period as possible yeah. um, to complete them. It's, yeah, it's it's not great timing, to be honest. The, the other date was the 22nd of May, which we might be um, pushing a little bit to get them completed. Um, but please feed back any issues that you've got and then we can... Okay. So the 22nd doesn't help Joan anyway. Are you planning to go or do you think I can? Yeah, okay. All right. Well, um, shall we go for the 30th or 31st of May and, and keep your fingers crossed? I mean, obviously, we, we do want to give the team, as, you know, two two months isn't a huge amount of time to get the draft account sorted out. I mean, it wouldn't be so bad if it was just a P&L account and a balance sheet, but there's a lot more stuff that goes in it. And obviously, in order for them to be draft accounts, they've got to be ready for the auditors. So we don't want them to present a set of accounts that needs changing for the next three weeks before they get them to. So if, if we look at doing that and then um, what we'll do at that point in time then is we will discuss, um, we we'd probably don't want another meeting three weeks later. So what we'll do is we'll discuss whether we move the meeting that goes in july back maybe a week or two or something like that what we were thinking was maybe if we brought it back so that it was just before the school holidays start that might perhaps help a few people as well so we'll we'll look at that we'll have a solution for the next meeting and then we, we can just pass it on to everybody and make sure that it's okay um <laughs> okay um we we think that there are probably for the 19th of june meeting we probably think that there are either two or three items that we can pull back to the 31st of may and then the others will just move back slightly um, but you know it if we bring the july meeting forward a couple of weeks then we can probably resolve that in any case so um okay um, does anybody have anything else that they want to say in relation to the um, audit plan? No. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we've got no urgent business. So unless anybody else needs to make any comments on anything, I don't think we've got anything. So thanks, everybody, for coming. And uh, have a pleasant evening. Thank you very much.